Uh, well, uh, good uh, morning, uh, all my dear students. Uh, Prakhar Bhumiya, Utkarsh, uh, Mayur, Suhani, Sraddha, Khushi, Sadhika, Nishant, Uma, Sahiva, Arya Singh, Ashutosh, Tanvi, Alma, Balchandra, Pratik, and uh, Harshu. Uh, welcome, um, all my dear students, Mansi. Uh, welcome to all of you on this. Uh, live streaming class. Uh, today we are going to revise the poem, A Photograph. Okay? The previous day I revised the poem, The Lebanon Talk. Uh, these two poems are there in your September assessment test. So one I have already revised the previous day and the other one I am going to revise today that is A Photograph. Okay? So um, let us uh, begin as uh, quite a few of you are there. So let me begin straight away. Uh, dear students, today our lesson is the photograph. Okay, so uh, if you have the textbook with you, uh, please keep it open and uh, also keep a pencil with you so that you can write down some of the value points or the meanings of the words that I discuss with you. Okay, uh, so you keep your hard book, uh, sort of textbook uh, in front of you. Okay, all of you. So here we begin. Dear students, uh, photograph. First of all, I will discuss the uh, theme of the poem. Okay, I shall discuss the theme of the poem first. Okay, uh, theme of the poem first. Okay, just a minute, let me truncate my image a little bit so that you are able to see the text. Yeah, uh, I have truncated the text so that you are able to see. I mean, see the uh, content. Okay, so dear students, uh, first of all, uh, let us discuss about the theme of the poem. So this poem highlights the nostalgic moment. This poem highlights the nostalgic moment. Okay. So, uh, nostalgic moment here uh, about the memory of our mother who has been captured inside a photograph. Here, in this poem, the, the, the poetess, the poetess uh, is recollecting her memory of her mom who has been captured inside a photograph. Okay. Next, the photograph shows the photograph shows the Puberskan mother as a jubilant young girl with her cousins on a beach. Okay? So what is the setting of the photograph? It is there, uh, the photograph has a setting of uh, beach, okay, beach background. Okay? Uh, the poet's mother along with her two cousins. Okay? Uh, along with her two cousins uh, where they are in the photograph. Okay, so uh, her mom is uh, in the middle, and uh, two of uh, her mom's cousins. Okay, okay where uh, on her left and right. So the photograph shows the poet's mother as a jubilant young girl with her cousins on a beach. The poem focuses on the mortal nature of human beings vis-a-vis -vis the immortality of nature. This is very important, dear students. So if someone asks you to uh, summarize. Okay, uh, summarize the uh, poem in just, uh, the theme of the poem in just one sentence, you can say this, third point, third bullet point is very important. The poem focuses on the mortal nature of human beings vis-a-vis -vis the immortality of nature, okay. Here, everyone knows that human beings are mortal, okay, we have to die one day. So, this particular fact has been expressed, of course, uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, it has been shown that nature is immortal. Nature has no death. Okay, the sea beach uh, background of the photograph, uh, the same sea beach is still there, even though her mom is not there, but still the sea beach is there, the sea is there. So, what does it suggest? It suggests that uh, nature is always immortal. Nature is immortal and perennial, whereas human beings are mortal. Human beings come to this earth for a few years or for some time only. They have. Uh, they do not have lifetime validity, okay? Human beings have limited validity, okay, uh, on this earth, whereas nature has lifetime validity. Nature 
sustains and nature is immortal so this is the core theme of the poem the poem focuses on the mortal nature of human beings vis-a-vis -vis the immortality of nature next there is all pervasive sadness throughout the poem there is all pervasive sadness throughout the poem okay so sadness because uh, the poet uh, is recollecting the death of her mom so it's sadness i don't understand his handwriting here Sir, uh, you tell them na, ki whatever they have sent already, na, the same copy they just send me on WhatsApp. Okay, so I will copy from there. Uh, you tell them please, because otherwise no, because I have to give them in writing. Na. So the whatever uh, whatever they have sent on WhatsApp, the same thing they can forward to me. From there I will copy. Okay, please tell them. Uh, so, the poet shows the transient nature of human life as against the perennial nature indicated in the poem by the example of a, a sea. So, this is what I just spoke about, dear students. Uh, I have just spoken about these things. The poet shows the, uh, the poet shows the transient nature of human life. Transient means lasting for a small period of time is called transient. The poetess shows the transient nature of human life as against the perennial nature indicated in the poem by the example of a sea. The poetess shows the transient nature of human life as against the perennial nature. Transient means lasting for a short time, human beings last for a short time on this earth, whereas the nature is perennial means nature is permanent. Okay? So, transient nature of human beings are indicated in the poem by the example of our mom. As well as perennial nature is indicated by the example of a C. Now, dear students, let's go line by line. Uh, Prakhar, am I audible clearly? Uh, please confirm me with the text. Prakhar, if I am audible to you clearly, please confirm me with the text. Uh, the cardboard shows me how it was. When the two girl cousins went paddling, each one holding one of my mother's hands. The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling, each one holding one of my mother's hands. Here, cardboard refers to thick hard paper used to frame photos. And paddling means walking through shallow water is called paddling. Okay, shallow means uh, where, where water is very low. Okay, uh, water is very um, not having depth. Okay, this for shallow water, where there is no uh, much of depth of water. This is for shallow water. So the cardboard of the photograph shows that uh, two girls, that is the cousins of uh, her mom, uh, went paddling. Okay, paddling, you know, walking to sh uh, sh shallow water each one holding one of my mom's uh, mother's hands so here the poet is, is giving the um, giving the uh, you know like uh, the photograph the uh, background information of the photograph he is saying that, that there is a cardboard which contains a photo and the photograph consists of the uh, her mother as well as her mother's two ca cousins okay who went for paddling on a seashore Understood? On a C. Okay. Next. Uh, here, let me paraphrase now. The cardboard photograph reminds the poetess of her mom. The cardboard photograph reminds the poetess of her mom. Okay? Because her mom is no longer there. She died when the poet was very small. Therefore, the cardboard photograph reminds the poetess of her mom. She is missing her mom desperately. Okay? Next. All three stood still to smile through their hair. All three stood still to smile through their hair. At the uncle with the camera, a sweet face, my mom's, that was before I was born. And the sea, which appears to have changed less, washed their terribly transient fit. 
now let me explain you dear students all three here refers to the the poet's mom and her two cousins okay they were standing still means they are giving pose for the photograph and while they were giving pose for the photograph they were smiling through their hair okay their hair strewn over the face by the sea breeze when they smiled at the camera okay because of the uh, breeze sea breeze their hair was uh, strewn over their face so smile through their hair at the uncle who did the smile at they smiled at the uncle who was taking the photograph a sweet face my mother's that was before i was born okay because uh, this particular photograph of the poetess's mom uh, was before the poetess was born when poetess's mom was uh, might be 12 years 13 years 14 years age when she was very small uh, the photograph um, was taken at that time therefore the poetess says that my mom's that was before i was born okay uh, which was uh, our sweet face was very much visible uh, on the photograph and the sea which appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient feet the sea which appears to have changed less and the sea which appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient feet okay so sea which appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient feet and the sea here uh, refers to uh, the sea where they took the photograph uh, of which they took the photograph which appears to have changed less what does it mean see the sea has as i told you sea is a part of nature which is perennial so sea has remained the same okay same now as it was 30 years 40 years 50 years 100 years before therefore the poet says the sea appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient feet transient feet refers to the fact that here transient feet means it suggests the uh, the you know, mortality of human beings that human beings die human beings are prone to death that is why transient transient means which lasted for only some time okay which lasted for only sometimes is something what is called transient uh, means something that lasts for only some time so here transient feet refers to the mortal nature of human beings mortal means human beings are prone to death okay so here yeah, the do you remember the third bullet point of the theme that i have discussed with you uh, this two lines discuss uh, describe these two this third bullet point okay of the theme okay here the poet has compared the perennial uh, characteristics of nature with the mortality of human beings by transient feet uh, mortality of human beings and uh, immortality of nature has been uh, here described through c the c which appears to have changed less okay so you can read here which appears to have changed less means the c which is a part of nature has not changed transient feet means human feet are personified as having a short life span as against immortal nature so dear students this is an example of transport epithet means literary device a literary device like simile metaphor personification alliteration this is also a uh, Uh, literary device which is called transient feet transient feet means uh, uh, see the word transient is not used with feet but it is poetically used here before feet okay to indicate the mortal nature of human beings therefore the phrase transient feet is the example of transferred epithet e p i t h e t you can write down uh, with a pencil um against uh, these phrases on your book so that you uh, you can uh, un- remember okay so you understood dear students this uh, stanza this two uh, these two lines are very important the most important uh, lines of this this entire stanza okay these two lines compares the mortality of human beings against the immortality of uh, nature okay next see here transient feet human feet are personified as having a short life span against immortal nature okay 
but actually here fit her personified but it is a, a literary device called uh, as i told you transfer epithet because transient uh, fit can never be transient okay but here transient has been used with fit anyway next a paraphrase let us read out all the girls posed for the camera while their hair dangled over their face all three girls posed for the camera while their hair dangled over their face they smiled at the uncle as he was taking the photograph okay they were smiling at the uncle while he was taking the photograph the poetess admires the sweet and tender face of her mother during her youthful days the poetess admires the sweet and tender face of her mother during her youthful days okay uh, because uh, she is uh, recollecting her mom and she is admiring her beauty on the photograph the poetess regrets that the sea which is a part of perennial nature washed away their transient feet here in these two lines the poetess regrets what does she regret about she regrets about the fact that sea which is immortal in nature which is perennial in nature washed away their transient feet while uh, during the photo uh, on the photograph it's visible the the wave wave is uh, washing uh, away their feet okay so therefore she is writing like this ki the sea which is very much permanent which is perennial is washing away their feet why transient just so as to uh, highlight the point that human beings come on this earth for a limited period only therefore transient word has been used before fit here by transient fit the poet has indicated the mortality of human beings now uh, next few lines some 20 30 years later she would laugh at the snapshot see betty and dolly she would say and look how they dressed us for the beach how they dressed us for the beach the beach okay so the poet is again uh, the poet is uh, also reminding us or giving us the information about uh, the fact that you know uh, some 30 uh, 20 30 years later after the photograph was taken the poetess's mother used to laugh at the snapshot snapshot means here the photograph okay uh, th- 20 30 years later when the poetess's mother was alive she would laugh at the photograph and she would point at others point to others about the photograph saying that see betty and dolly betty and dolly are the two cousins of the poetess she said see betty and dolly uh, and look how they dressed us for the beach how they dressed us for the beach okay so uh, it seems the poetess's mom uh you know used to remind is is to point uh, to others about the uh, about uh, her cousins and all that okay and how they used to be dressed uh, you know for the beach uh, so that is not so important let us move on but paraphrase let us go through 20 30 years later the poetess mother would laugh at her own picture her mother would refer to her two cousins okay in the photograph how dolly and betty okay is to Uh, dress okay or in in in, 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 uh, in other words uh, how the poetess's mother was also dressed up for the beach uh, the way they all got dressed up for the sea holiday appeared to be strange to the poetess's mom okay poetess's mom it appears to be very much strange now that she has uh, like so many years have passed by and the way of wearing dress has changed you know the outfit has changed therefore you know, she is surprised uh, at the weird way in which they were dressed up for the uh, for the uh, sea holiday okay now let's move on to lines 14 and 15 uh, and before that you see here the sea holiday is given in the sea holiday so the sea holiday was her past my is her laughter okay so here both the things are past have become past now the sea holiday of the poetess's mom was past as well as the laughter of the poetess's mom okay is also past for the poet okay so sea holiday is the past for the poetess's mom and uh, her mother's laughter is the uh, past for the poetess understood so the sea holiday is the past for the poetess's mom and uh, her mom's laughter is the past for the 
poetesses. And then she says both, both these, the sea holiday, both here refers to the sea holiday as well as the mother's laugh, laughter. So both this, uh, both this rhyme with the labored ease of loss. Rhyme means decay, okay, disappeared. Both things have become disappeared. Neither the holiday is there nor my mom is alive, okay, or mom's ma laughter is alive. Therefore, both have become decayed. Both have become become uh, disappeared. Okay. Uh, both right. Both here refers to the sea holiday of the poetess's mom and the smile of the poetess's mom that the poetess now badly misses. Okay. So both here refers to the sea holiday of the poetess's mother and the smile of the poetess's mother that the poetess now badly misses. Both have disappeared now. Okay, labor is of loss, you see dear students here, labor is of loss means both the past memories, her mother's sea holiday and for the poetesses, her mother's smile have suffered a sense of loss, okay, sense of loss, which is hard to come to terms with, that is hard to accept, okay, uh, because mom is no longer there and mom's sea holiday is also no longer there, therefore, I know, the poetess has fond remembrance of her mom's, uh, mom's sweet, sweet smile or sweet laughter, which she is very, finding very difficult to forget. That is why labored ease of loss. Labored. She was laboring hard to forget. She is missing her mom's sweet laughter. Okay. Uh, so this is what the poet is finding difficult to forget. Therefore, uh, the poet says that. Uh, for the, uh, the for her mom's sea holiday, which was also very fond fond uh, uh, memory for her mom, and for the poetess, her fond memory is her mother's laughter. These two things have suffered a sense of loss because they have already gone. So it's a loss. Something which has gone is something uh, we can sense uh, to be lost, which is hard to come to terms with, which is difficult to come to terms with. Come to terms with means which is difficult to forget which is difficult to, uh, to accept. Come to, come to terms with means uh, uh, hard to forget here, which is hard to come to terms with because they have uh, become lost. Both the things have become lost. Therefore, the poetess has taken a lot of effort, lot of labor. She has to, uh, you know, do a lot of labor to forget this because she is not able to forget this. Therefore, labor is a loss and which, of course, is a loss for the poetess. Now, you can see here, now she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived. Okay? The poetess mother has been dead as many years as that girl lived, as that girl here refers to the poetess. Okay? Uh, for example, if the poetess has lived for 25 years now, then her mom, it has been 25 years her mom has, uh, you know, the poetess mother has been dead for the same number of years she has lived on this earth. Understood? The poetess mother has been dead for the same number of years she has lived on this earth. Okay? Uh, so, uh, might be, uh, you know, it could be anything, uh, but she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived. And of this circumstance, there is nothing to say at all. It silence silences. And of these circumstances, the circumstances of the death of her mom is the circumstance the poet has mentioned here, uh, which makes her silent. It silence silences, okay? It is silent because uh, the mom is not there, okay? And the very thought of her mom's death has made the poet is silent, silent, okay? Therefore, the very thought of the mom, of the poet's mom being dead is something which silences entire things, okay? So, this circumstance means, circumstance means, the circumstance here refers to the moment pertaining to the death of the poet's mother. It silence silences means the silence caused due to the death of her mother silences the poetess as well. The silence caused due to the death of her mother has silenced the poet as well. That is the meaning of it silence silences. She is just speechless when she is reminded of the moment when her mom died. Understood. So, her mom died long back, but whenever she thinks of her mom, mom's death, 
okay uh, she becomes silent and her silence also makes the environment silent that is what is the meaning of this now let's uh, go through the paraphrase the poet's mother has been dead for as many years as she herself lived on this earth okay the poet's mother has been dead for as many years as she herself lived on this earth the poetess thinks that the circumstance that has led to the death of her mother is so painful that she has nothing to say about it and then the silence caused at the death of her mother has silenced everything else as it is very painful as it is very painful so think it out you see what does the word cardboard denote in the poem why has this word been used cardboard denotes a thick hard paper which has been used as a support to frame photos the cardboard carries the photograph of the poetess's mother when she was merely 12 years old then the word has been used to convey the message that it has survived the onslaught of time to show the smiling face of a 12 year old girl who has lived and died a long time ago the word symbolically represents the transitory life of human beings against the permanence of any art form okay so cardboard has many meanings here okay so uh, it, uh, you can write down these meanings okay all sets of meanings uh, then what has the camera captured the camera has captured three girls on a sea holiday each of the two cousins was holding the hand of the poetess's mother next what has not changed over the years does this suggest something to you the sea which is a part of nature has not changed over the years okay so the sea which has which, which is a part of nature has not changed uh, over the years and what does this suggest this suggests to us the permanence of nature this suggests to us the permanence of nature okay you understood this suggests to us the permanence of nature understood next what is the meaning of the line both rhy with the labor is of loss okay the mother had to reconcile to the loss of her happiness to the of sea holiday whereas the poet had to come to terms with the loss of her mother's beautiful smile both have suffered a sense of loss which is hard to accept so both have suffered a sense of loss okay the poet's uh, the holiday of the uh, the sea holiday of the poet's mother as well as uh, the mother's sweet smile for the poet both have suffered a sense of loss which is hard to accept so you write in detail in this manner dear students next what does this circumstance refer to what does this circumstance refer to so you see here this circumstance refers to the moment this circumstance refers to the moment which caused the death of the poet's mother the death of her mother had caused created a vac vacuum in the life of the poet so what does this circumstance refer to this circumstance refers to the moment which caused the death of her mother the death of her mother had created a vacuum in the life of the poet so these are the two value points you got to write in your answer next the three stanzas depict three different phases what are they the first phase depict the mother as a 12 year old girl okay so uh, please see mm, okay uh, the three phases uh, the three stanzas that depict three different phases the first phase depict the mother as a 12 year old girl who went on a beach holiday with her two cousins secondly the second phase depicts the poet's mother as a middle aged woman who laughs at the memory of her childhood photo understood the second phase describes the poet's mother as a middle aged woman she is a middle aged woman who laughs at the memory of her childhood photo next the third phase depicts the tinge of sadness and repentance on the part of the poet at having lost her mother who has been shown to have died okay third phase of the poem describes the tinge of sadness and repentance on the part of the poet having lost her at having lost her mother who has been shown to have died so dear students these are some of the uh, ncert questions that you need to prepare for the test as well as some extra questions 
which are given for practice, okay, you've got to uh, practice them at home. Why is the name titled a photograph? Next, you see here on your screen, uh, you've got to prepare these questions as well. Why is the poem titled a photograph? And next one is, how does the poet contrast the terribly transient fit with the sea? Okay, this is a very important question. How does the poet contrast the terribly transient fit with the sea? And then third question is, what does the poet mean by the sea holiday was her past, mine is her laughter? This is also important question. And then what is labored is of loss? And next is what does the poet mean by its silent silences? So along with the NCRT questions, if you prepare these extra questions as well, in fact, most of the uh, answers are overlapping. You can uh, easily uh, write if you learn the NCRT answers, you can also write the answers of these questions. Um, uh, with a slight variation in answer uh, in question number three and question number uh, two and three. Two and three, okay? You can prepare these two uh, questions and the rest you will you'll, you'll be getting in the uh, NCRT uh, answers also, okay? So you please prepare these question answers for the test which we are going to conduct in the month of September, okay? In this month only. Uh, and uh, I have already explained in the poem in detail. Now, the next class I will start with uh, uh, some concept uh, information of, um, of a prose lesson, which I will let you know on the day of uh, the explanation, that is, day after tomorrow. So dear students, that's all for today. I'm going to sign up, uh, sign out uh, now. And I'm going to sign out now. Washing the feet of mortal sea is immortal. Uh, washing the feet of mortals, sea is immortal. Uh, yes, sea is immortal means sea always everlasting, perennial, it goes on and on and on. Nature is always, see the part of nature, dear students, and nature is always perennial, okay? And uh, when is our test? Test, uh, perhaps uh, date is not yet fixed. Uh, as and when date is declared, we will let you know. Probably uh, second or third week, we will let you know shortly, shortly, dear students, okay? So you please uh, prepare the question answers from NCRT as well as uh, the uh, uh, exercise questions, practice questions that I have given you. Okay, thank you Alma, Arya, Suhani, Bushi, uh, Arshu, uh, Sraddha, Gauri, Prabhash, uh, Prakhar, Bhagyasri, Aditya, uh, Riya, Arya, uh, and Gauri Bharti. All of you, Tanvi, thank you so much, Sadhvika. Uh, there is a problem with logging in website. There is a problem in logging in website. Okay, so uh, Sarvika, uh, you do not forget the login details, you write down somewhere on the book, okay? If you forget the password or if you um, forget the mail ID or password, password most probably if you forget or if there is a variation in lowercase, uppercase, in typing, in that case also you cannot log in. So please uh, do write down somewhere if you uh, forget your password, write down somewhere your user ID and password detail, okay? Because um, uh, if there is a slight variation in lowercase, uppercase, uh, if there is a space given between two characters, in that case also it will show uh, incorrect password or incorrect uh, user ID, okay? So therefore, dear uh, students, all of you, uh, whenever, whenever you log in once, you don't log out of the website, okay? If you log out in that case, again, you've got to log in, understood? So once you log in to Chrome browser or Edge, Microsoft Edge browser, you uh, stay logged in, okay? Just close the browser, don't uh, sign out of the website, okay? And then you don't have to uh, log in time and again, understood? Okay. Uh, for uh, Sadhvika, if you uh, if you have already signed up, uh, then you've got to sign in. And if you haven't signed up uh, yet, uh, then you've got to for the first time sign up. Okay. But once you sign in with your email ID and password, uh, make sure that uh, you remember this and make sure that you stay logged in uh, the website. You do not log out once again from the uh, you know website. Okay. Uh, thank you all of you, dear students, and if you further have any problems, Sadhika, let me know or through WhatsApp, I, I, I'll, I'll give you the solution. This is the only solution, you know, you, your password should be uh, correct. 
if your password is incorrect, if your if your caps lock is on, or if you give space between two characters, then you cannot be logged in once again. Okay. Therefore, once you log in, do not log out. Once you sign in, do not sign out. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice day.